The 8-bit era of gaming was at its peak with Nintendo on top of the mountain heading into the late 80s. But a new era of gaming was starting to take shape that doubled the bits of the systems that came before. 16-bit gaming was on the rise. NEC came in first with their PC engine in 1987, which would become the Turbo Graphics two years later. But Sega, who tried to compete with Nintendo unsuccessfully, was ready to introduce their new 16-bit system that did everything. Nintendo don't. It's the Sega Genesis. This console definitely felt like the beginning of something big for the company. Sure, they weren't the first to have a 16-bit system, and this wasn't their first console in general, but this was the source of great things to come. The Sega Genesis was released on August 14, 1989, as Sega's third console and perhaps their most memorable. As the 16-bit revolution was just kicking up into high gear, the Genesis is setting the bar with its brilliant color graphics, digital sound with a stereo music synthesizer, and extensive library of hit games. No wonder why it is the core system, but I think that just describes the contents inside the cardboard, but whatever. The leader of the 16-bit video revolution, as this box proclaims, really has a lot to show for it. But not on the flaps, as they say more of the same, but on the back. I'm not entirely sure when this box type was released, but it must have been around when these accessories and controllers were out, not to mention the many games they're showing off here. Like the box says, only Sega has it all. But it's time to say farewell to said box and get an in-depth look at the core system itself. Taking the main piece of hardware away from the plastic, it's evident the type of beast that has graced my countertop, and it's that of the 16-bit variety. I'll be driving this whole bit thing down your throats until this video ends, just saying that if you haven't noticed it already. On the bottom left corner, we have a number of things to toggle around with. We have the traditional on and off switch, the conveniently gray reset button, and a volume dial for those headphone users. And you did hear me correctly, this system has a headphone jack for those who prefer to have that wonderful digital stereo 16-bit tunes all in the comfort of your ears. I'm pretty sure this is the only system to have one of these. Genesis does what everybody doesn't. On the back, we have your basic hookups in the AC adapter, AV out, and even an RF out to work with TVs that only have this particular hookup only. Very smart, if I may say. You also have a channel switch for the system to appear on either 3 or 4, so you can either play games and switch to local TV, or still play games and switch to prank the public access shows. We also have this random hole right here. The 16 bits this system had may have been too much and it popped a screw off. On the bottom of the system, among all these foot pads, screws, vents, and other stickers and info, we have this expansion port which you can use to connect into a CD-based peripheral also made by Sega. Or not considering the red do not remove tag on the pins. I did review the Model 2 Sega CD a long while ago, but this system works and looks more pleasing with the Model 1 Sega CD. I haven't been able to find it yet, but maybe I'll be fortunate to find it in working order for 30 bucks, like this system sold for once. Now at the front of the system we have the two controller ports for a controller that's on par with other classic controllers. This bad boy right here is a very memorable controller, with more uses than you may not know about that doesn't deal with this system. But that's a story for a future AC review, for the main part of the Genesis is on the horizon. The power may be off, but the 16-bit power is always ready to get up and running. All you have to do to get the Sega Genesis to run is to insert one of the several hundred cartridges available into the slot and be prepared to enter the next level. Early versions of the system used to say high definition graphics on the top of this ring, 
but HD was still in its infancy, so that was dropped later on, I believe, before Sonic the Hedgehog was released, so that way they could brag about another feature. Blast processing. You may have heard about that saying before, and to put it simply, it's a cool way for Sega to say the Genesis was faster than its competitors. And that was true when compared to the Super Nintendo, even though the SNES beat the Genesis out tech-wise everywhere else. But that didn't matter when the power of marketing was able to welcome all sorts of gamers to the next level by shouting the brand name in your face. For games, the Genesis started out with endorsed sports titles and their own quality arcade ports, but the first few years didn't make the system a real hit. But that all changed when a certain blue hedgehog caught the imagination of gamers everywhere and made the Genesis a runaway success. More great games followed suit like Echo the Dolphin, Contra Hard Corps, Toe Jam and Earl, and the superior version of Mortal Kombat because it had the blood code. But the fun doesn't have to end there as you could connect your Sega CD and 32X to expand your library of playable titles and make your system feel assimilated to another generation. But that's only for my Model 2. The Model 1 stays as it is so it can play the special cartridges like Sonic and Knuckles or Virtua Racer. Sega did do a plenty that Nintendo didn't. The Sega Genesis by itself is an awesome console. It gave gaming a creative edge and attitude as well as delivering 16-bit goodness with blast processing to boot. If you so happen to find a Sega Genesis of any kind, and at a reasonable price, you should get it as soon as you can to experience a time where Sega was on top, ahead of their game, and could tout to do anything the competition couldn't. Although NEC could and Nintendo were about to, but they still couldn't touch blast processing. It's the Sega Genesis. Over the next several years, Sega's consoles wouldn't be able to match the same success the Genesis made, forcing the company to shrink down its involvement in the console market. Nintendo at one point had to shrink something down as well, but it was something in their handheld market. And on the next episode, we'll take a look at Nintendo's swan song to the Game Boy that made the system micro-sized. If you think I missed anything, please leave a comment. If you like what you see, leave a like. If you think others could get knowledge out of this, share this video. And if you want to see more, go ahead and subscribe. Now if you'll excuse me, nostalgia is called. Oh,